In this video, we're going to look at questions 23 and 24 from your final exam review. Uh, question 23 is asking us to give the domain uh, for the following functions. And uh, for each of these, we want to think back to our parent function. Um, if you look at the uh, function in question A, you can see that it's a rational function because there's division. Um, our parent function for rational is y equals 1 over x. And our domain for the, parent, for the parent function is all reals x not equal to zero because whenever we have a fraction uh, the denominator cannot be equal to zero. You can't divide by zero. So what we're going to do here with this function in question A is take our denominator x squared minus four and say that cannot be equal to zero. And then we just need to solve for x. Um, I have x squared minus 4, so I'm going to factor. Since it's a quadratic, we need to factor to solve. Sorry, that's my dog running out of the room. Um, if I factor x squared minus 4, that's going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. And I wrote equals 0, but I should have written not equal to 0. This cannot equal 0, which means x plus 2 cannot equal 0, x minus 2 cannot equal 0, and x cannot equal negative 2, x cannot equal positive 2. Um, and so that's going to be our domain. All reals, x not equal to negative 2 or positive 2. All right, let's move on to the next part on number 23. Um, in this one, notice that we have a square root function. Now, if I think back to my parent function, y equals square root of x, uh, the domain for that function is x greater than or equal to 0. So we want to do the same kind of thing here. We're going to take the expression that's underneath the square root, 2x minus 5, and that must be greater than or equal to 0 uh, because you can't square root negative values. You can only square root positive values and 0. So 2x minus 5 must be greater than or equal to 0. And then I'm going to solve for x. 2x is greater than or equal to 5. x greater than or equal to 5 halves. And uh, that is the domain for this function. Let's look at the next one. This time we've got a natural log function. So again, let's think back about our parent function. y equals natural log of x. Uh, the domain for that function is x greater than 0. Notice that's not greater than or equal to 0. Remember that natural log function, if I sketch the graph really quick, it has, looks like this, has a horizontal asymptote at x equals 0. So it can't equal 0, it has to be greater than 0. So that means we're going to take the expression that's inside the natural log function here, 4x plus 7, and say that that must be greater than 0. And then I'm going to solve for x. 4x greater than negative 7 and x greater than negative 7 over 4. Alright, let's move on to question 24. Um, in this question, uh, both of these functions are rational functions and it's asking us to give the domain again but then describe the different types of discontinuity and sketch a graph. With rational functions, we can have two types of discontinuity. One is just a whole and then the other type is, of course, the vertical asymptote. And in order to uh, tell what types of discontinuity we're going to have, we need to factor both the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to factor the numerator, x and x, 3, okay, my stylus isn't working, there it goes, 3 and 1, and then, let's see, I want the 3 to be negative and the 1 to be positive. Then in the denominator, I have a difference of two squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. All right, so first of all, I'm going to look at the denominator, and I know that my denominator can't be equal to 0. And so that means that x plus 1 cannot equal 0, x minus 1 cannot equal 0. x cannot equal negative 1. x cannot equal positive 1. And so that's going to give me my domain. My domain is all reals um, x not equal to negative 1 or positive 1. But the thing that's different on this question is, is we're being asked to describe the different types of discontinuity. 
Now, if I go back up to my factored version of the rational function, notice there's an x plus 1 in the numerator and the denominator, and we can cancel those out. I have removed that factor from my rational expression, and that means that the discontinuity that I get from this factor, which of course would be this one, this is going to give me removable discontinuity because I was able to remove that factor from the expression. And what that means is that on the graph of this function, at negative 1, there's going to be a hole. Now the other one, the factor that remains, let's get a different color here, the factor that remains x minus 1, that one I cannot cancel it out. I can't remove it from the function. And so this is going to be non-removable. I'm going to abbreviate that. Non-removable discontinuity which is going to result in a vertical asymptote on the graph. Alright, now the directions here ask us to sketch a graph. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details about sketching a rational graph. I think that's in a different section of the exam review where we do the rady. Uh, but I am going to sketch the graph quickly here. Um, it looks like I'm going to have a root, an x-intercept at positive 3. Uh, we said that we were going to have a vertical asymptote at 1. Here's 1, so I'm going to put my vertical asymptote here. Um, I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at positive 1. And if again, if you're not sure how I got that, um, check out the video on, um, I believe it's the video previous to this one, uh, the questions, the rady questions that are on your exam review. Um, my graph is going to go through that root there at 3, but then over here at negative 1, we're going to have a hole. And so um, if I want to find out where the hole is, I can plug negative 1 into uh, what the factors that are remaining. Um, let's see. Is this getting a little messy? I'm sorry. I'm going to erase this and plug that in right here. I'm going to plug negative 1 in and I get negative 1 minus 3 over negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 4 over negative 2, which is positive 2. That means that the whole is going to be up here at negative 1, positive 2. And the graph is going to look like that. So vertical asymptote at positive 1, whole at negative 1. And those are the two different types of discontinuity that we could have on a rational function. Let's look at one more of these. Um, again, I'm going to factor uh, my numerator and denominator. So 2x and x, um, 3 and 1, negative, positive. Yeah, that's going to work. 2x plus 1 and x minus 3, and then in the denominator I've got x and x, 2 and 3, minus and plus. Um, so again, my denominator cannot be equal to 0, which means for my domain here, I'm going to have all reals, but x cannot equal negative 2, that's for my first factor, and x cannot equal positive 3 uh, from the second factor there in the denominator. Uh, but we need to describe which type of discontinuity I have with each of those. Notice that the x minus 3 factor is in the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to cancel those out. And what that means is that at x equals 3, there is removable discontinuity because I was able to remove it from uh, the function and that's going to result in a hole on the graph. Removable discontinuity, that's a hole on the graph. At x equals negative 2, that's going to be non-removable discontinuity, which means that's going to be an asymptote on the graph. Um, and again, I'll do a quick sketch of the graph. And the main thing, I'm sorry, that's my old dog. 
if you hear those noises over there, I'm sorry, he's not being very quiet for me while I'm making these videos. Um, now remember the main thing about this graph is just to understand the two different types of discontinuity. Um, if you're struggling with how to graph these rational functions, go back and watch the Rady videos. Um, but let's see, we've got an asymptote at negative 2. Um, I'm going to have a, um, a root wherever 2x plus 1 equals 0. That would be at negative 1 half. So I'm going to put that point right here at negative 1 half. And then I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at 2. which means my graph, let's see, where's my hole? My hole is at 3, so 1, 2, 3. And let's find the coordinates of that hole. If I plug 3 into my factors that are remaining, I get 2 times 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 2. So that gives me 7 fifths. And so that means my hole is going to be at three and seven fifths and so I'm going to say that's about right here can label that over here seven fifths um, but that means that my graph is going to go through this X and it's going to have that hole there at three and then the other piece of the graph would be up here on the other side of the asymptote 